Our journey began when I made the admittedly short-sighted decision to purchase three drop cam, <coughs> excuse me, uh, nest cams without reading the fine print. Sure, they had excellent image quality, a modern design, and a super easy to use app, but there was one fatal flaw. In addition to the $150 per camera upfront cost, Nest wants a whopping five to $30 per camera per month to store the footage in the cloud for you. And they offer no way for you to hook up your own storage device. So we put together this. It costs a third as much and has no monthly fees. Speaking of things with no monthly fees, that is to say, as long as you pay for it yearly, private internet access. It's a VPN service that encrypts all of your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. It's got a ton of other useful features too, so check it out at the link below. There are a ton of reasons why someone might want a security camera system, even if you're not a drug dealer or whatever. A handful of cameras on your property can act as a deterrent for would-be burglars. Remember, they're often after the easy score, not the big one. They can be a convenient way to monitor your pets or kids when they're at home alone. They can significantly aid law enforcement's efforts to recover stolen goods. And this one's kind of a no-brainer. They can even lower your insurance rates making it so they effectively pay for themselves. So what do we got? Well, the build for each is actually pretty simple. All we need is a Raspi Zero W, so that's wireless, so you don't need a dongle or anything like that. The little camera module, it connects with a ribbon cable. And there's even a pre-built operating system some guy made called Motion iOS. Is it free? Yeah. Sick. And open source. All right, let's do it. Since these cameras are intended for use indoors, we forewent any waterproofing, but this could be done fairly easily with some silicone and conformal coating. So after two days of tinkering with the software, measuring the electronics, and modifying some existing models from Thingiverse, we had a couple of options for 3D printed enclosures for our cameras. So the model I found online actually needed a little modification for the heatsink. Wait. Raspberry Pi runs that hot? Yeah, especially when you overclock, which we're gonna do. We're overclocking it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a preset that's built in, but you can get much better frame rate when you overclock them. And I made a little arm that uh, adjusts both ways, so you get lots of tilt and pan. Oh, that's cool. I see we've taken the uh, Chinese action cam approach and ripped off GoPro. Hey man, they make good stuff, okay. <laughs> Other way. There you go. <laughs> Not bad. For those of you hoping to build something similar at home, you can pick up a case with holes already cut for the official Raspi camera modules from ModMyPi, or you could get the models linked in the description printed from a company like Shapeways. Okay, so I pre-configured the OS and the Wi-Fi as that can be a little time consuming the first time, but we should just need to plug it in and wait for it to boot up. Uh, hopefully it actually works, right? It's powered. Yeah, I know, but it might not uh, have detected it. So now that we're booted up, you can see our IP. We've got a login screen. Um, we should really do a written guide on this. Yeah, we post on the forum. Probably should. If you could do that up for me, that would be great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's see the interface. So this is really cool. The number of customization options in the software can look a little overwhelming at first, but the premise is pretty simple. Now, we just have this camera module here attached to this Raz Pi at the moment. So all we need to do is add the camera in, set up our desired config. So we're gonna use 720p, 10 FPS, and then just set the footage to store on one of our servers here at the office. What actually gets recorded is pretty much up to you. So we're setting ours up to just continuously record up to a maximum of 24 hour long clips with a preservation length of one month, after which the old footage will be automatically deleted. But you can also set it to record only when motion is detected, which will help you preserve space and your sanity if you ever have to go back into the footage to look for something. So our config will change a little bit once we have multiple cameras, but we can talk more about that later. So this is pretty cool already, but we can take it to another level. 
a more conventional security camera enclosure would keep our Raspi Zeros much safer outside and would look a lot more like a professionally installed security system. So we actually borrowed the idea of a common home security hack, buying fake CCTV cameras off Amazon to kind of like set up around your property, except we are going to put real cameras inside. You know, I'd say you're a genius, but it was my idea. Once our fake cameras arrived, cracking them open revealed an almost entirely empty casing. Perfect. We did end up 3D printing a little holding bracket for our camera, but if I were you, I wouldn't bother. It's much easier to just remove the black plastic piece that holds the fake camera and hot glue the real one into place. As for the power cable, the rear housing just needed a little hole for it. So now that we have two cameras with the potential for more, it's actually recommended that you get another Raspi and run Motion iOS on it as a server with, ooh, no camera attached. So we've got an example of what that might look like right here. So most of its processing power can be devoted to encoding footage to be stored onto your NAS via the network cable. That way you can see all of your Wi-Fi cameras in one place. Do note though that you will need something like a Raspi 3 Plus because a Pi Zero won't be able to handle the load of a bunch of cameras. So that'll limit the resolution and the frame rate of the footage that can be recorded. To make this config work better, the cameras themselves can be run in a special setup called Fast Network Camera Mode, which uses the Pi Zero's GPU to encode a motion JPEG stream to the Pi server for much higher image quality and frame rate. So you can check out the forum post in the description for a how-to on that. These actually look surprisingly good. Like that wide angle looks sick. Yeah, so both of them are running 720p, 10 FPS right now, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, for a security camera, it's actually quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, these look way better than your average CCTV, and all of the footage that you get can either be backed up to Google Drive, so goodbye, expensive Nest subscription, or it can be stored directly on a local NAS or just a PC where it'll be safe from third parties and other prying eyes. And because you can choose your own camera elements, you can decide what features you want on each one. So this one has a fairly narrow field of view, whereas the one that we have over there is using a wide angle lens. So I guess it's conclusion time then. This DIY solution is a super awesome way to keep you in control of your cameras, and it can actually help save you a very significant amount of money every month for your home or business. But, there are some compromises. First, we're giving up any special features like audio, whether it's two-way or one-way. Second, the control panel does look pretty great as a mobile web page, but you'll need to do port forwarding tomfoolery in order to access it remotely, and there is currently no Android or iOS app. And then finally, the casings and mounts, frankly, don't really look that great. Oh, and keep in mind that you won't have any support number to call if you're having issues, as helpful as those typically may or may not be. The Cove Commuter is a portable Bluetooth speaker that you can take anywhere. That's where the portable part comes in. It connects via Bluetooth, that's where the Bluetooth part comes in, and features 10 meter range, that's almost 33 feet. It features an X-Base subwoofer to let you feel the bass, and it doubles as a speakerphone for incoming calls. The rechargeable battery can last up to eight hours and it's water resistant with an IPX4 rating. It's got two EQ modes, one designed for indoors and one designed for outside. And you can check it out today at the link below. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, Sans Hole, and our community forum, which you should totally join, which is, by the way, where you're gonna find the uh, guide for how to make yourself one of these on LeCheap. <laughs>